Good morning. Welcome to the Phenomenal Blessing Ministry Sunday morning message. I'm Pastor Mark Carvinol, and once again, we are delighted to have your presence on YouTube or Facebook. And we are just excited about today's message. And we want to just share the enlightenment uh, from the Lord uh, at the same way that he gave it to me. We want to share it with you. And the ministry is only as phenomenal as the blessing that we uh, seek for you uh, come forward. And, the, and every week we look for something great to happen. And uh, we're not talking about God being a magician. We're just talking about a great experience in him uh, through each week. Last week, uh, we were blessed to have with us uh, Sister Dickie Saunders that brought, out, uh, brought us greetings from Farmville, North Carolina. And this week we have with us, along with William Hall, Elder Hall, his lovely wife, Sister Helen. And Sister Helen is going to bring us greetings all the way from Solon, Ohio. We would like to thank you for being with us this morning. Thank you for waking up real early just to be here <laughs> to see us here. We thank you for watching us, uh, being with us on this Sunday morning which we will be here every Sunday morning at 9 a.m. and for our midweek service at 9 a.m. on Wednesday. We thank you and we thank you that you will just be with us. Join us with this phenomenal blessing that we have received ever since this ministry started. And we want to invite you to be here to socialize with us and to enjoy. Thank you. Bless you. Brother Hall, will you take us to the throne in prayer? Father God, in Jesus' name, Lord God. Lord, we lift this ministry up to you, Lord God. We give it to you for it is, it is what you have ordained, Lord God. Lord God, we bless the speaker, Lord God. We bless him. We lift him up to you, Lord God. And Lord God, we say this message coming forward is of you, Lord God. Lord God, we ask you to open our hearts, our hearts to receive, our ears to hear that which the Spirit has uh, is going to give us today, Lord God. Lord, we thank you. We thank you for all, everyone that is here. We thank you for everyone that has listened, Lord God. We ask phenomenal blessings upon everyone within the sound of my voice, Lord God. We ask blessings upon them and their families, Lord God. Lord, we thank you. We come, Lord God, as your sheep seeking, seeking to be fed, Lord God, seeking to be fed, fed the word of God. And Lord God, we thank you and we praise you. And as always, we in the name of Jesus, we do pray. Amen. Amen. We're delighted to once again have uh, uh, have the opportunity to go before the Lord and go before his throne. And it is always encouraging uh, to know that others are gaining from God's presence through this ministry. And without any further delay, I want to look into the word of God this morning from Second Chronicles. Second Chronicles. The 34th chapter, verse 1, and Second Chronicles, the 35th chapter, verse 20. Uh, I'm not going to read <laughs> the, both chapters. Uh, this is for you to study during the week, but this is appropriate for our message today. Second Chronicles, chapter 34, verse 1. Josiah was eight years old when he became king, and he reigned 31 years in Jerusalem. Let me read that again. Josiah was eight years old when he became king and he reigned 31 years in Jerusalem. And Second Chronicles 35, verse 20. After all this, when Josiah had set the temple in order, Nekot, king of Egypt, came up to make war at Shermaz on the Euphrates and Josiah went out to engage him. Our theme for this, this message, 
the time between. Between Second Chronicles verse 34 and verse 1, chapter 34 and verse 1, and Second Chronicles 35 and verse 20, 38 years, 38 years trans transpired. And that's so true for all of us. The time between birth and death. The greatest lessons that are taught and the greatest lessons learned occur between our peaks of life. What takes place between going from one victory to the next victory, from the next high point to the next high point, is where the lessons are learned. We call this the trenches. You gain the most when you're in the trenches of life. And I wanted to point out, I want to point out to you today that when we're reading the Bible, we need to tune in to what the Holy Spirit was doing. Uh, in each phase of a verse. I know we, we've been taught from our youth to memorize verses or small chapters or portions of a, of, a, of a chapter, and we do it in repetition, and that's fine, and that's good because we need the Word of God. But let me read from verse 3, just a brief passage, for, I mean, just a brief moment from verse 3 of chapter 34. For in the eighth year of his reign, now, mind you, from verse one to chapter to verse three in that same chapter, eight years goes by. Let me read it so we can catch it now that the eight years have gone by. Josiah was eight years old when he became king, and he ruled 31 years in Jerusalem. And he did right in the sight of the Lord and walked in the ways of the Lord of his father and did not turn aside to the right or the left. For in the eighth year of his reign, while he was still a youth, eight years went past. So we're talking, we start at verse one with an eight, eight year old uh, lad. And by the time we get to verse three, we have a 16 year old, 16 year old king, still a youth, but he's been on the throne eight years. So what took place in Josiah's life from verse one to the first statement of verse three. He walked, he did what was right in the sight of the Lord and he walked in the ways of his father David and did not turn aside to the right or to the left. What we have here in verse two is that during those eight years from verse one to the first part of verse three, Josiah served the Lord eight years walking uprightly, learning the ways of the Lord. A high point for him would be being appointed king at eight. Another high point is being king eight years later at 16. But between the time between eight and 16, Josiah learned to walk in the ways of the Lord. For in the eighth year of his reign, while he was still a youth, he began to seek the God of his father, David. So he began to seek the God of his father, David. He'd heard about David's relationship with God and how, as a king, David was known as the sweet psalmist of Israel and wrote the psalm that we now, uh, many of the psalms that we now uh, use in ministry. But here, Josiah wanted to be like David. And so he began to do the things that God demanded of a king. And it said that he walked in the ways of his father, David. And in the 12th year, now listen to this, between the verse 3a and 3b, four more years go by. Seek the God of his father, David. And in the 12th year, Four more years go by between that semicolon. So what I'm saying is there, there's a lot that goes on in our lives and what we can see in the scripture 
that what takes place in the time between. I got some questions for you shortly. Let's let's go through this and then we 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 we'll look at what goes on in the time between. And in the twelfth year, he began to purge Judah and Jerusalem of the high places, the Asherim, the carved images, and the molten images. In four years, now look look at this from from verse one to verse three. We have gone from an eight year old boy to a 20 year old king who's walking uprightly before the Lord, doing what is right. And now he begins to make the purge in Judah and Jerusalem, the Southern kingdom and its capital, getting rid of the female uh, images and getting rid of the carved images and the molten images. Six years later in verse eight, He's now 26. In verse 8, now in the 18th year of his reign, he's 26 now. When he had purged the land and the house, he sent Saffron, the son of Azaliah, and Messiah, an official of the city, and Joaz, the son of Joaz, the recorder, to repair the house of the Lord. Now he realizes that the physical house of the Lord, which represents his God, needs repair, and it had been neglected. So now at 26, 18 years into his reign, he begins to do the physical work on the house of the Lord. By the time we get to this 26 years, something marvelous takes place. This is a high point. You got a new king. He's doing, he's walking uprightly before God. He's walking uprightly before the people. He's demanding a true worship. And he's repairing the house of the Lord. And at 26, this is the, the astounding thing that I saw in this scripture some time ago. The priests find the Bible. Think about this. This man has been king now for 18 years. He's 26 years old. They've been having worship services every week. He's been doing all the reform that he knew to do. And then when he sent them to repair the house of the Lord, they actually find the book of Moses and the law. My question is, what were the preachers preaching for those years when they didn't have the Bible? They didn't have the word of God. They didn't even know what it was. When you get it, when you get, when you, this week, when you read these two chapters, the 34th chapter and the 35th chapter, you'll discover that these men got terrified when they saw the word of God. How can you lead the people in worship and have never read the word of God? The time between. See, God was calling this man, Josiah, from his youth to set the people back in order. And also they discover something that in order to be in order, you must have the word of God in you. You cannot get in order without the word of God. It's impossible to get in order without the word of God. Here we have men leading a nation its spiritual direction and they had not read the word of God. They were the priests, they were the Levites. They were doing things solely based on tradition and how they had heard it done before them. We've always done it this way. And so they continually perform their religious duties by rope and not by inspiration, not by enlightenment and not by illumination. They just continued, continued and continued without knowing who they were and what they were charged to perform. The time between these short 
uh, scriptures that we read, we find that the, uh, we've gone from an eight year old boy to a 26 year old reformer. 18 years, it took 18 years just to discover the Bible. It took 18 years to discover the book underneath the rule of a righteous king. So that means so many times leadership can bury what the people need to live by. What will enable a nation to grow Leadership can hide it. And until a reformer appeared, they had successfully hid the word of God from the people of God. In the 19th verse of the 35th chapter, let me get my glasses here. In the 35th chapter, the 19th verse. In the 18th year of Josiah's reign, the Passover was celebrated. The key, the key to the Jewish faith, the key to the law that Moses received from God, the, the key to the message of the prophet was all about the Passover, the coming of the Messiah. And here they had, they had no knowledge of what the Passover was until the book was discovered and they celebrated the Passover in the 18th year of Josiah's reign. It's been a long time since they had served the Passover, long time since they had mocked coming out of Egypt. And then finally, 13 more years go by. Listen to this. From the 19th, from 2 Chronicles 35, 19, to the next verse, 2 Chronicles 35, verse 20, 13 years go by. The time between. And in those 13 years, Josiah made some alliances that cost him his life. Now, let me get back to us. Let me get back to us and I'll. What has taken place in your life since January 1st, 2020 to September 12th, September 13th, 2020? A global pandemic has swept the world. Many businesses have folded. Millions of people have lost their income. Schools have closed as we once knew them and reopening as a, in a hybrid model. Panic about socializing. New terminology has been introduced social distancing, self-quarantine, self-isolation. So many things have changed in the time between the New Year's Eve celebration and Labor Day in one year, nine months. Before we get too harsh on the men that found the Bible that how many people prophesied something on New Year's Eve only to find themselves in a different world and what they had spoken no longer fit in the world in which we live. So the men who were conducting worship as the, as the priests and the Levites in Judah and Jerusalem prior to discovering the law in the book of the prophets. We find that there's a lot going on in the time between. And now I want to 
not make this a gloom and doom message. Can't do that anyway. It's the truth. I want you to just think solemnly. The psalmist writes, say, see law. Pause and think about this. The greatest points in your life were not the time that you learned your greatest lesson. It was the time between events that taught you how to love. It was time between events that taught you how to care for others, how to take care of others. Let me say it this in this manner. It is in poverty that you learn to save. It is when you are without that you may learn to pray. It is in times when there are wayward things going on in your life that you learn to seek peace. It's in the humble stages of life that you can appreciate family and those who are closest to you. Oh, we have a marvelous opportunity to look at one man's life. And Paul writes to us that these things were written for our example, for our instruction. In two chapters, we get 39 years of a man's life in two chapters. Now for my first question to you, how many chapters Will your life fulfill? The most significant things that we find uh, about Josiah was that he got off to such a marvelous beginning. So that leads me to know that someone close to him, mother, grandmother, uncle, mentor, taught him early that if you are going to lead the people, you are going to need the wisdom of God. What we're faced with in, the, in this current situation in our nation and in our world, it's easy to see that there's a void of wisdom, godly wisdom coming out of our nation's capital or our state capitals or even our city hall. And therefore, all of us who know who is in control and who is sovereign and who is Lord and who is reigning and will always reign, we need to talk to him on their behalf. The time between the church's closing and whenever they may reopen, is when you can learn your greatest lesson about a personal relationship with God right now. When you can spend time with him. The time between when it looked like all was drying up, God has given the phenomenal blessing ministry its greater growth and revealed its greatest potential. Right now, do not let the world, do not let the world influence your thinking. See, God said, come out from among them and be not unequally yoked. And so sometimes when the church or his children won't do what he says, he has to administer some chastisement. And so since we would not separate ourselves from the world, you couldn't tell that in many instances, the worship of the world and the worship in the church and separate him. And so what he had to do was shut down one so he could bring us out and bring us back to him and embrace him, embrace who he is and how good he is and how marvelous he truly is. The time between blessings is when you learn your greatest lessons. Let me repeat that. 
the time between blessings is the time that you learn your greatest lessons. Right now is as we pray and seek things from God, understand that you're learning, you're in a learning experience while you're waiting for the manifestation. Don't get upset. Don't fall apart because it does not show up the next day. Know that the lessons are being taught. Let's think about this. We read in verse 3, and a, solo, a semicolon, which we are taught in, grammars, in, 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 in our grammar classes, simply means to pause, but it's not the end of a sentence. There was a semicolon, and it was four years pause before the next word or the next chapter, the next part of his life was experienced. What we are going through right now, let me see if I can sum this up in the next uh, two to three minutes that I have. What we are going through right now is a semicolon. This pandemic is not the end. It's a semicolon for us to pause, see law, and think calmly about our presence and our relationship with our God. What have we had as our priorities? What was what was uh, the number one things in our lives? What will we focus on? There's a semicolon called COVID-19 has shown up. It's causing us to pause and think calmly about our relationship with our, with our Father first, our Heavenly Father. It's caused us to pause and think calmly about our relationships with our family, our children, our grandchildren. And if you're young enough and still blessed enough to have sibling, our sibling, renewing relationships with extended family members. Because the time between our birth and our death is the only time that we will have to learn, to teach, and prepare others. Think calmly about this. Somebody prepared Josiah. We were introduced to him at eight, as an eight-year-old lad. And the next time we read and hear about it, he's ruled a nation. And he's now 16 years old. But at that point, the time between, he had learned to walk with God. So what we are going through right now, through this pandemic, is a time to learn to walk closer with God. Deacon Saunders, would you close for us in prayer? Father, in the name of your son, Jesus, Lord, we come this morning thanking you, Lord, as we come to the close of another morning service. Lord, we pray that we have heard and that we will take it out and witness to dying men and women. Let them know that God is a good God, that God is a savior, and that God is a healer, and that he have everything that we need. Lord, we need you, Lord, and we can't get along without you. Oh, God, you've been so good to us, and you brought us, as many have said, from a mighty long way. And, Father, we realize that you are not finished with us yet. So, Father, we just want to say thank you this morning and bless those that are sick, Lord, wrapped up in pain, don't know which way to turn. Oh, the doctor doesn't give them up, but, Lord, let them realize that you are the one that got all power in your hand. And, Lord, that... When it's time, you know the time. No mistakes that you'll call them home. And, oh, God, we just said thank you this morning. And, Lord, continue to bless Reverend O's, Lord, as he bring the holy word to your peoples. And, Lord, we just say thank you today and bless us and take us to another, to another week and let us meet here next Sunday morning. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. I want to just share briefly um, 
that next week uh, we'll, we'll, we'll be back on Sunday morning at nine and also Wednesday morning at nine. But we're starting on October the 1st. Mark your calendars. Give you a couple of weeks to get ready. October the 1st at 7 o'clock p.m. And you'll be hearing from me through email or text message and call. Uh, and we're going to have the Phenomenal Blessing Midweek Bible Study starting at 7 o'clock p.m. on Thursday evening, October 1st. And until next, oh, Wednesday morning, 9 a.m. I don't want to get ahead of myself. We will be uh, here for our midweek uh, blessing. It's uh, Wednesday morning at 9 a.m. Until then, God bless you and see you on Wednesday. Man.